The two ingredients for any successful company are satisfied customers and increasing profits. To achieve these, companies aim to improve the quality of goods and services. High quality is the most important strategic goal for any company seeking to thrive. There has been a lot of theoretical studies about how to improve quality. Some important quality paradigms we will review in this course include those provided by eminent quality gurus such as Deming, Duran, Crosby, Ishikawa, and Taguchi. Edward Deming developed a popular philosophy known as Deming's philosophy in which he established theories for total quality management. Let's take a look at some of the important tenets of his philosophy. The first is the use of statistical process control to identify special and common cause variations. This tenet emphasizes identifying both special and common variations. Special variations are erratic and unpredictable. Common variations are inherent in the system. The second tenet states that quality depends on the policies of management. And if management creates appropriate conditions and motivations for workers to improve quality, then every worker will contribute to a better quality product. So this is important because Deming's theory of profound knowledge talks about how management should create conditions in which every worker contributes to quality improvement. The fourth tenet of his philosophy has actually become more popular than the philosophy itself. Deming suggests using the plan, do, check, act model to improve quality. This is known as the Deming cycle and is abbreviated PDCA. Next, let's look at the principles of Duran's philosophy. Joseph Duran was a management consultant and engineer who developed a philosophy, the first principle of which suggests the use of the Pareto principle, or the 80-20 rule. According to this rule, 80% of quality improvement is possible by fixing 20% of problems. This rule separates the vital few from the trivial many. The second principle states that, from a customer perspective, quality has two aspects. The first is more features, and the second is freedom from trouble. So, he suggests that quality improvement deliver both these aspects. The last principle suggests using the quality trilogy model. This model uses quality planning, quality improvement, and quality control for improving quality. Let's discuss Philip Crosby's philosophy next. Philip Crosby is a legendary name in the quality management. His first book, Quality is Free, is thought by many to have ignited the quality revolution in the United States and in Europe. The first important tenet of Crosby is that quality should be defined as conformance to requirements and not as exceeding customer expectations. The next is that quality is measured by the cost of nonconformance. Philip Crosby preached the importance of zero defects and the necessity of creating processes that do things right the first time. The next quality paradigm is Ishikawa's philosophy. Karu Ishikawa is the great mind behind the Ishikawa or fishbone diagram, with which you are probably familiar. This type of diagram allows users to see many more possibilities for causes and effects than they had been able to before. I'll walk you through the principles of this philosophy. First, he suggested the use of cause and effect diagrams to systematically list all the causes that can be attributed to an effect. These are sometimes called Ishikawa or fishbone diagrams. Second, he was the man behind the expansion of Deming's plan, do, check, act model. And last, he emphasized the use of quality tools such as the control chart, run chart, histogram, scatter diagram, Pareto chart, and flow chart. And this power team, Quality Gurus, isn't complete without Genichi Taguchi, an engineer and statistician who developed a methodology for improving product quality by identifying external influences, especially noise, on a product's consistency and quality. Here, I'll show you the principles behind the doctrine. The first is manufacturing processes are affected by external disturbance, or noise, and this impacts the quality of goods produced. Noise should be minimized whenever possible. But some noise, for example bad weather, cannot be avoided. Systems should have robustness 
or the ability to function satisfactorily despite noise and external disturbances. The next important concept is quality loss function. This function is used to quantify the decrease in the perceived value of the goods by the customer once the quality decreases. Last is his suggestion to use design of experiments, a concept we'll cover later in the course. It was Johann Carl Friedrich Gauss, a legendary mathematician and physicist, who first started working on normal distribution, which forms the basis of Six Sigma philosophy. But the person who first coined the term Six Sigma was Bill Cohn, an engineer with Motorola. Something important to remember here is that the Six Sigma process is one in which 99.9997% of the products manufactured are statistically expected to be free of defects. In other words, 3.4 defects per million.